Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. Please subscribe and keep watching more details. Bold and beautiful setting up Thomas to serve hope the ultimate shock. Fun fact about soap fans, when we decide something, there is by and large no way to change our minds. For instance, to a portion of the bold and beautiful audience, I'm a Thomas hater and always will be. Am I really, though hell, no. Yes, I've taken the character to task for keeping hope in the dark about her baby not being dead, hastening Emma's demise, manipulating Douglas to urge the object of his obsession down the aisle, using Zoe as a pawn in his game, faking a call to CPS to break up Ridge and Brooke, ordering his son to do the wrong thing and keep quiet about it and acting as if being with the woman he loves isnt sufficient to justify their relationship after a few months together. But do I hate him of course not. No more than I do Ridge, who raped Brooke and still somehow gets to be considered her destiny, Brooke, who broke her pact with Taylor and nevertheless was allowed to play all high and mighty with her frenemy, Donna who threw herself at Eric when his marriage to Quinn was in trouble, Eric, whose sudden interest in pickleball severely undermined the love we thought he felt for his then-wife, Bill, who moved in on Steffi the second she was emotionally overwrought enough to have sex with him. Hope, who lied to Liam about her lust for Thomas for ages before she kissed him and then some, Liam, whose reaction to that kiss demonstrated all the emotional maturity of a toddler who needs changing and don't even get me started on the human waffle's idea of commitment. Gads, I hate so many characters in theory, I lost track of what I was saying and I hadn't even gotten to Sheila yet, and she's tried to murder half of the people she's ever known. I know you won't believe this any more than I'll ever buy that the deck wasn't from the start stacked against Taylor in her and Brooke's last tussle over Ridge that wig, come on. But the point is, I root for Thomas as much as I do any character. In his brain bleed, macking on a mannequin state, there was only so far that the show could take him. He had to turn a corner. He had to be redeemed and I wanted him to get a fresh start. If Matthew Atkinson could sell Thomas conversations with a dummy, he could sell anything ice to a snowman, salt to a slug, non-alcoholic beer to, me. I thought we were getting that slate wiped clean with his romance with Hope, only she was a 33 to 1 3 RPM record and he was a 45. I still appreciate the fact that she behaved like a human being who didn't want to ping-pong from one marriage to the next instead of like a bold and beautiful character. And I still dislike that Thomas wasn't willing to take the win for now, an ongoing, happy and successful relationship with the woman he loves when he couldn't get exactly what we wanted a ring on it. But we can all agree, can't we? that it made for some amazing drama for the actors to play and no way is it done yet. When Hope remembers what soap she's on and that everybody gets married and divorced every year or so, provided that the Forester living room is available, she's sure to tell herself, OMG, drama queen. Why am I making such a big deal about this and hightail it overseas to throw caution to the wind and accept Thomas' proposal? Only by the time she gets there, he will be enjoying escargot with Ivy, who thanks to Ridge not being Eric's son isnt a blood relation. We, even in Europe, foresters only date pseudo-relatives. To add insult to injury, Douglas will turn out to be crazy about Aunt Ivy. In the wake of that shock, we might see Hope steal a play or ten from Mom's playbook to entice Thomas back into her arms. Brooke might even coach her from the sidelines, hey, there's a reason she managed to seduce Ridge into her orbit over and over and over again. What say you, bold and beautiful fans are you down for an Ivy Thomas Hope triangle while you're here, show your love for Thomas by scrolling through the below photo gallery of his eyebrow raising life story. In the heart of a bustling metropolis where skyscrapers kissed the heavens and the neon lights danced like fireflies in the night, lay the epicenter of power and intrigue, the prestigious Hope Corporation headquarters. A towering edifice of glass and steel, 
it loomed over the city like a titan, its sleek facade betraying none of the secrets that thrummed within its walls. Within these walls, Thomas, a young and ambitious employee, navigated the labyrinthine corridors with a sense of purpose that belied his nerves. Today was the day he had been waiting for, the day he would present his groundbreaking proposal to the board. His heart pounded with anticipation as he approached the grand double doors of the boardroom. As he entered, the room fell silent, all eyes turning to him expectantly. Thomas squared his shoulders, trying to ignore the weight of their gazes as he began his presentation. His voice trembled slightly at first, but soon found its rhythm as he delved into the details of his plan. His proposal was audacious, a bold new direction for the company that promised to revolutionize their industry. He spoke of innovation and opportunity, painting a vivid picture of a future where Hope Corporation stood at the forefront of progress. As he reached the climax of his presentation, Thomas could feel the tension in the room mounting. The board members exchanged nervous glances, murmuring amongst themselves as they weighed his words. Then, just as he was about to conclude, a voice cut through the silence like a knife. It was Hope herself, the enigmatic CEO of the corporation, her presence commanding the attention of all who were present. She fixed Thomas with a steely gaze, her eyes betraying none of her thoughts as she spoke. Thomas, she said, her voice like velvet wrapped around steel, your proposal is certainly, intriguing. But I'm afraid it lacks a certain, boldness. A certain, audacity. Thomas felt a sinking feeling in the pit of his stomach as Hope's words washed over him. Had he failed to impress had his months of hard work been in vain but then, just as quickly as the doubt had crept in, a spark of defiance ignited within him. He refused to let his dreams be dashed by a single critique. With a newfound resolve, he squared his shoulders and met Hope's gaze head on. With all due respect, ma'am, he said, his voice steady despite the turmoil raging within him. I believe my proposal is exactly what this company needs. It may not be the safe choice, but it's the right one. It's bold, it's beautiful, and it's the future. There was a moment of silence as Hope regarded him, her expression unreadable. Then, slowly, a smile spread across her face, the corners of her lips quirking up in a way that sent shivers down Thomas's spine. Very well, Thomas she said, her voice tinged with a hint of amusement, you've convinced me. Your proposal will go forward. A wave of relief washed over Thomas as the tension in the room dissipated. He had done it. Against all odds, he had succeeded in winning over the most formidable woman in the corporate world. But little did he know, his triumph was only the beginning of a much larger game one in which he would find himself caught in a web of deceit and betrayal. For behind the facade of Hope Corporation lay secrets darker and more sinister than he could ever have imagined. As Thomas delved deeper into the inner workings of the company, he soon discovered that not everything was as it seemed. Whispers of corruption and greed echoed through the halls, and he found himself torn between his loyalty to the company and his conscience for he had learned the most important lesson of all, that true courage lies not in the absence of fear, but in the ability to face it head on, and emerge stronger on the other side. And with that knowledge burning bright within him, he set out to carve his own destiny, ready to face whatever challenges the future may hold.